reports. I congratulate Jim. President Gerald Hurley will now present Jim with the traditional red blazer and award. him about, I don't know how many years ago, I don't know if he's still here, Reggie Smith. He, he came up and introduced himself. I faced him in AAA ball when, just before he went to the big leagues, and uh, probably the reason he remembers me is because I couldn't get him out. What a great player. I, I, I'm really, really happy to see you. I, uh, yeah, I was fortunate. The Lord blessed me with a little bit of a athletic ability. I, I did get the 50 years. I, after my 15th year, I played uh, my last two years in Hawaii. I got a call from Minnesota to coach and uh, lasted 35 years until I was 67 and then retired. But uh, it was a great run. We had a, a lot of bus rides. All night long, a lot of sweating down the south, sometimes no air conditioning, but I'd do it again. I loved it. Uh, I'd like to inter introduce or recognize my family members over here. Uh, my sister Ann, that was on the video, and her husband, Lanny. <laughs> my beautiful daughter, Joey. And my granddaughter, Emma, who is, uh, she's on her way to college, going to college in South Carolina. She's got to play soccer. My brother Pete, probably my best friend. And uh, one of my nephews, uh, Cliff Corzell, he played football at uh, Ohio U. I think he was, uh, he played at 6 8 2 9. He's a, he's a school teacher now.
very interesting experience when I was playing football at UCLA. We were asked a couple of guys down in the weight room one day if we'd like to be uh, bouncers slash bodyguards for an upcoming artist in music who was opening for Leon Russell at the Anaheim Convention Center. And they said it's going to be five bucks an hour. I said, we're in. Don't care who it is, don't care where it is, five bucks an hour, we're in. So we went down to Anaheim Convention Center, and the artist that we were standing next to was uh, Elton John in his first uh, American tour. And in the process, we stood by the stage and we were watching 200 Anaheim police officers shoulder to shoulder across the front of the stage getting pelted with everything that wasn't nailed down because it was during the 68, 69 Vietnam War and everybody that wore a uniform was not a good person. And I said to one of the duty officers next to me, I said, uh, why don't you go out there and straighten some of those people out? And he said, well, we're not allowed to do that. We're sworn duty officers. And, and I said, well, can we? And he said, sure. So we went out and we gave some of them the message that they needed to get, and they stopped throwing things. And so we went back to school and we said, you know, there's a there's a hole in, in this police force security uh, process, so we thought we might start a little company and we named it Peace Power. And Peace Power was, a, interestingly enough, a fist in the middle of a peace sign. And we wore them on our arms and we basically cleaned up most of the, the audiences in the concert industry for the next two or three years. And that company today, uh, and for any of you who watch um, Division I football or National Football League games, you see all those guys in the yellow jackets circling the field. That is a company called CSC, which is uh, the outgrowth of Peace Power. Still being run by the same guy that we started with 50 some years later. 50,000 employees worldwide and uh, a major, major component in most of the sports activities. So, again, timing and lighting and opportunities. There's a lot more uh, examples that I could give, but I'm going to go to the end here and just say that for you young people, it's, it's about vision, perseverance, certainly friends and family, and uh, you got to dream big, you got to think big thoughts and you've got to make them happen whenever you get the opportunity. And it's not necessarily about getting into the Hall of Fame, but it's living a life that qualifies you. And that's the most important thing that you can get out of this. Certainly being part of this group is a huge honor for me. Um, and last but not least, uh, Scott told me not to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I just want to say to the brother of Mike, the grandfather of Sam, the husband of Sue, happy birthday, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole Wertz, 72 years old. Congratulations, Mindy. President Hurley will now present you with a traditional red jacket and your award confirming your induction into the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame. First of all, the motorcycle ride home from high school was one and only. I cried all the way home. I was not that cool. <laughs> I hated it. I don't like motorcycles. So anyways, let me get my speech because I'm not good at this. All right. First of all, I want to say thank you, and I'm so honored to be here tonight. I have so many people I'd like to thank that have helped me throughout my career. I'd like to start with my parents. As a mom of three kids, I can now understand and appreciate the love, the dedication, the commitment, the money, and the struggle it took, or it takes, to follow your child's dreams. Mom, Dad, thank you for all you've done for me and the sacrifices you've made to help me get to the top of the sport that I truly love. 
Mom, thank you for always being the rock of positivity and reminding me that, reminding me when it was tough that it was just a game. Dad, thank you for coaching me and pushing me to always be my best. You are sometimes tough, but I appreciate that more now than, I, than ever. <clears throat> you two have always and will always be my biggest fan. Without you two, I would, not be, I would not be receiving this word tonight. I love you both with all my heart, and I will forever be grateful for all that you've done for me. Um, throughout my career, I have been blessed with some pretty amazing coaches. As a player, I've learned that the best coaches weren't always the most knowledgeable coaches, but the ones that believed in you the most. The coaches that built you up and saw you better as a better player than you actually were. What that does is sets high expectations, gives the player pride and confidence, and continues to push them to be that good. With that said, I'd like to thank the coaches that did that for me and has stood out the most. My dad, Mike Howells, Mike Stiff, Mel Severs, Richard MacArthur, Dean Lappin, Eddie Jones, Rob Wagner, Casey Myers, and Coach Clint Myers from ASU. Thank you all for always believing in me and pushing me not to only be a better player, but to always be a better person. Jim Clover, we talked about you. I really did have you in my speech tonight, by the way. Jim, I want to thank you for helping me through a very tough year. Um, I injured myself my freshman year. The, I missed pretty much my whole freshman year in college. I came back and immediately reached out to Jim to um, get some help because he was the one person I knew in Riverside that would be the best. <laughs> you were so amazing and you committed so much of your time in getting any better. I can't thank you enough for that. Because of you, I, you helped me return to ASU at almost 100% and shocked the trainers there of how fast I recovered. So thank you for that. I do appreciate it. He had me up at 5 a.m. And we've been college, that was not good at that. I promise you. 5.30 at the sports center, so. Um, softball didn't just get me some championships. It made me the person I am today. It has shown me true meaning of family outside of family. It has taught me so many life lessons that I still fall back on today. I have met some amazing people and have gained some great friendships through it. I have seen so much and I've been to so many places because of the sport alone. I even got to meet the President of the United States, George Bush at the time, and got a tour through the White House. And I was pretty excited about that. It has given me a great life and journey, and I will always be thankful for that. I now have a beautiful family, and seriously, the best husband a girl can ask for. I have two boys of my own now playing in Orange Crest Pony League here in Riverside. I have officially given up coaching, which I am very sad about just recently, but I'm excited because my plan now is to give my boys and my daughter every opportunity that my parents gave me. For all the youth athletes out there, I can sh if I can share a little advice that I wish I knew then, take advantage or take everything you can from any training a person is willing to give you. Appreciate the people that pushed you the hardest. Know that a dream comes separate than the work it takes to get there and achieve it. Never compare yourself to others. Just be the best you. And remember to always balance confidence with humility. To everyone that uh, came here tonight to support me, thank you for being here sharing this special night with me. I truly appreciate it. You mean so much to me. Thank you to the staff and volunteers that made this all happen. I know this is all volunteer and this is so amazing. You've made us feel so special tonight and I appreciate that. I am truly honored to be standing here tonight representing my hometown of Riverside. I can only hope that my story and achievements
can inspire our local, our local youth athletes. Thank you so much. From the marching band to defensive end to the NFL to Jesus, that's a great trip. Congratulations, Derek. President Hurley is presenting you with the traditional red jacket and this unique award officially inducting you into the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame.
Sergio Canales. I know you didn't know you were going to be in the, the ceremony, but uh, Sergio and I both came in at the same time. Sergio was in the Army. So I looked around, like most people do, and tried to find somebody that looks like me. Hey, there's another old guy. Hey, you. We're going to be friends. <laughs> so uh, Sergio was on the team, and uh, something like that it helps you out a lot when you have somebody on the journey with you. Again, like running long distance, sometimes you just to know, to see someone else out there running, you know you're not by yourself. And Sergio was that guy who was out there, running. you know, we're dealing with some of the similar life things. We're old men trying to rekindle something or just trying to figure out our place in life. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, Coach Meyer, Coach Brown, incredible. You guys are my, my first coaching staff, and I don't know if you really understood that it would be so important to the rest of my career. So, um, if you can understand you know, somebody that's just walking into something for the first time, no, no experience at all, everything is brand new. So my first coaching staff is the, uh, are the individuals who actually propel me to continue and to do anything else that I did after that. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Also, all you guys here, this is incredible. Honestly, I wish you guys were me, not to sound too vain, but sometimes uh, you really can't put anything into words. So naturally, if you guys are me, you feel what I'm feeling right now. Thank you very much. We are so incredibly pleased to have Coach Gary Rongo take his rightful place in the Hall of Fame as he dons his red jacket and gets his individual award in his photo. Coach. Okay, let's talk about this picture. This is day four of four straight days of watching grandkids. So that's why that picture looks like So I know there's a lot of grandparents out there, you know what I'm saying? Day four of a, a weekly gauntlet of watching these individuals. I'm watching Powderpuff Girls. I'm watching. Wild Crafts. Ooh. Well, first of all, I would like to thank my wife, Cindy. There's 10 people at my family table, and they will all tell you, and John Crona also, that the Hall of Famer in our family is my wife, Cindy. A high school baseball game lasts two hours. Two and a half hours, and then it's over, you move on to the next game. But that lady has taught dozens of kids how to read. Hundreds of kids got interested in reading because of her, and that's the kind of stuff that lasts not a lifetime, but for generations. I love you, sweetheart. Good job. I'm going to apologize to all my players and all my assistants, and I counted on up yesterday, and I had 74 assistants in 34 years at Arlington, so I went through a lot of assistance for being such a jerk at practice. I was a miserable person to be around during practices, and uh, I just want to apologize to all of them now. I see what a jerk, what a big jerk I was. One of the joys of coaching, however, is having kids play for you and then come back. One of the greatest joys of my life is having my son be a bat boy for me, my son play for me, my son play for Jack Smitherin and Doug Smith over at UCR, and then come back and coach with me. That's been a great pleasure for me as a father to have that experience with my son and just to see the things that he's been through, not only during that time, but Cindy and I are continually amazed at Bart's mental toughness and his approach to life has served him well. I also have a friend of mine, 
and Art asked me the other day, he says, you, you're going to have Mark at the table with you. He's your best friend. And I go, he's not my best friend. Mark Billington is my brother. I consider him my brother. Been through a lot together. At one point, we didn't think we'd have any grandkids. Now we both have five. And we're comparing notes on the power of girls. John Corona. The first person I met at Arlington was John Corona. The second person I met at Arlington was Glenn Joseph. Those of you that know Glenn, I can't talk about him. I don't have enough time. But those of you that know Glenn know that he's a, he's a movie, a Spielberg movie waiting to happen. John Corona. Probably the most decent person I've ever been around in my entire life. The number one single biggest thing the Riverside Unified, Riverside Unified School District has ever been a part of is the veterans program that John Corona puts on. In this and I say that my dog was a part of a 1994 Arlington Mock Trial National Championship team. But that program that John Corona puts on in the spring is amazing. I would recommend highly that everybody go to that. Because I'm sure John will be somehow in charge of that in the future also. Also, you can't make this stuff up. The first person I met at Arlington was John Corona. And when Mark and I started to develop our relationship, we started talking and Mark told me, he says, you know, I moved from Texas and I went to Cucamonga Junior High and the, guess who the first person Mark met at Cucamonga Junior High and he's the first person that came up and shook his hand and says, Clyde Church, California, Clyde Bar School, John Corona was the first person to meet Mark at Cucamonga Junior High. I want to thank Jill Ryle and Liz Jennings, they were my first principals. I was over at Pauley with Joe Ryle, and then lost my job with Proposition 13, and then I got Liz Jennings. Both great principals, completely different, but great bosses. I want to thank Rich Graves for giving me my first job at Riverside as his assistant, and I want to thank Jack Harrison for giving me the JV team when I was at Arlington. Both guys, tremendous coaches, extremely underrated. The biggest influence by far, three people on my coaching career. Sam Peachy, number one. Those people that know him are going to hear these, they've already heard this stuff about Sam, so I'll just tell everybody, for me, Sam Peachy was a combination of John Wood and uh, Vince Lombardi. He had all the answers, and he treated everybody like they were his own son. I love that man, and he believed in me, and that I didn't believe in myself. He uh, gave me the job at Arlington because in those days the athletic director basically ran the school. I know Sam did. Sam ran the school and Sam pretty much got what he wanted when he actually turned over the job to me. Um, it's because he believed in me. The second person, a coach's coach, Dan Ariano. Dan Ariano, I was listening to stories yesterday a little bit this morning and I hear about Bob Mortar coaching all these sports and I saw Rich Thalder, Mike Carty will tell you, a big part of Mike Carty's success is Rich Thalder was winning his JV basketball. And Dan Ariano can coach anything. He can coach left-handed ping pong players and he can coach the varsity football team. And he would do it in the same season. Tremendous coach, and he was a coach's coach. When you played Coach Ariano's team, you were in a lot of trouble. And no matter what he was coaching, if you weren't prepared. And Coach would always tell me about the seven P's, and I put it in the locker room. Properly prepared practices prevent piss poor performance. And those are the seven P's for a coach. If you properly prepare your practice, it will prevent a piss poor performance. And Dan Ariano lived by that. And without a doubt, Rich Stoller, the first 17 times we played Rich Stoller, he kicked our butt 16 out of those 17 times. I came home with Tim Foreman and Vince Gonzalez, two of my 74 assistants, 
At that time, I was like, I can't take it anymore. I want to copy everything that guy does. I cannot go over the north anymore. I can't have north come over here anymore and just treat us like a redheaded stepchild. It's not going to happen. So we would go, North would always play at night, we'd play in the afternoon, we'd run over to the sport center. We would take notes on how they took pregame. You ever seen North take pregame in those days? If you weren't alert, there would be a 911 call immediately. Balls were traveling everywhere, six coaches were hitting fungos, trajectories, guy, one guy's thrown home, one guy's thrown over the first. I hate to admit this, some of my former Arlington players are here. We copied everything that he did and we put in the North pregame. And we did, we, as, soon as, as soon as we started that, we started seeing results because you'd have to concentrate before the game and be on your bed. Otherwise, you get killed with all these balls flying around. It was it's absolutely tremendous. And another thing that Stalder Troll uh, taught me was having great staff. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that he had great chance as his pitching coach. Ray Saucio was his hitting coach, and Tom Kennedy running his lower level teams. So this, this man really knew how to run a program. So I owe Rich Stalker a heck of a lot for giving me the, uh, and, and boy, I admit it. And it just worked. I remember the, the first time we ran the pregame, Gary Pertel, who was coaching over at Norco, said, boy, you've turned it into Northwest. I said, Arlington's right, now a Northwest campus because now you're doing the same thing. And I told him, I said, I'm sick of that man beat me. Absolutely sick of that. I gotta grab some of these water real quick. Somebody's drinking water. No, that's a living Don't count this on my time. I know what Tim Clevenel's going to do. Tim Clevenel's going to tell a story about me setting my foot on a fire. Accidentally, one time during a pep talk. Don't believe it. After that, everybody's dismissed, Tim's going to go on this outrageous lie of a story. Don't believe the story. I entered the Ivy League with Bob Porter and Bill Herman and Ramona. Gary Parcell, Mike Dart, and Don Harris at Marco. Lyle Wilkerson over Corona. Rich Stolder at North. Rich Graves at Pauley. Mike Duckworth at La Sierra. And Ron Edmondson at Norta Vista. I, I came in as a young whippersnapper. I thought, man, this is going to be sweet. It's going to be easy. And I go against all of them. It was a bloodbath for five years. They just tore us up. Every one of those guys. And you know, we've had some good rivalries. I mean, you could you could list it's, it's changed through the years. When I was coaching stuff, we've had some rivalry games with, with all the other high schools. But I remember going to go see a, a, a Norta Vista, a Rod Edmondson Norta Vista game against Mike Duckworth, La Sierra game. Those were bloodbaths. Bloodbaths, those baseball games. Boy, those guys handed me my hand. What a what a what a good coaching that was there at that time. Arlington was the perfect match for me. Worked for the school for 37 years. I taught science with a great science department that understood my, my first love. Cindy never had my first love is baseball. Cindy never has to worry about another woman. It's always been baseball. Never had to worry about that. 37 years, never had to write a referral on any kid at Arlington High School. That's how good the Arlington kids were to me. I coached at Arlington with Bill Grisham, John Corona, Dan Ariano, Becky Gagnon. Becky Gagnon still hasn't lost the tennis match. You know, she's 64,000 and zero. Uh, Eric Biddle, John Seidel, Kevin Watson, uh, Kevin Watson, Smokey Kursuchi, Jack Harrison, Dickie Gibson, Mark Coe, and my longtime assistants, Tim Borman, John Costa, 
and John Wilco. I wanted to give them a shout out. Now for the players. I'm sorry, it'll only be a couple more minutes. In from 1995 to 2004, we won over 210 games. In 1999, the Division I champ, Arlington Lions, may be the finest team I've ever seen, even from a spectator point of view. And I was a spectator. My job was not to misspell anybody's name, make sure nobody batted out of work. And in 2004, we were 16 and 10 going to the playoffs, and we lost our last three league games. And I was ready to mark and part potato. After every loss, I was ready to give it suicide for a 24 hour period. I was on suicide watch. And after the 2014, uh, 2004 regular season was over, I said, hey, I, I don't have any answers. These guys should be winning more games. So we decided to turn it over to Art and Steve Madrill, and they turned things around and they won the Division I championship in 2004. That made me appreciate what 1999 did because they played that hard in that way from the very first practice. When you have guys like Bill Murphy and Ryan Christensen and Anthony Lanetta, Jason Franz, how many high school teams can say that four guys were drafted in professional baseball from one high school team and eight guys on the team got the scholarships? That's a pretty good team. And all you have to do is spell the names right. Uh, in 2002, we were fortunate enough to win a uh, Division III title with Zach Sanicola and JoJo Reyes pitching alternating games. Those boys did a great job, so I wanted to give those guys a shout out also. I want to thank you very much. I want to thank the Riverside Hall of Fame Committee for putting on this. It's been, it means a lot to me and my family, and it is a very special feeling to be on this, up on that wall. I see guys, I got to talk to Barry Meyer today. I coached uh, spring football with Barry Meyer one year. And after, after spring football was over, Barry said, you know, Rungo, I think you might be a pretty good coach. You, you, when I ask you to go get me the coffee, you bring back a good cup of coffee. So, you know, I, everybody's got to start somewhere. you got to start at the bottom and work your way up. Thank you.
Uh, in fact, I have a framed picture of one of the swim club teams in my house because it centers me and reminds me where I come from. I think of Alcott and the sixth grade sing, of Gage, and of course, Polly. I'm telling you, class of 76, <laughs> class of 76, brilliant minds, kind souls, and lifetime friendships. And then who ever imagined there would be girls on the boys team, including Julie? One of the highlights was playing the same guy from another team for three straight years. Now let's just say he wasn't very nice the first time we played. But at our last match, he brought me a rose. And at first I thought, oh, that's so sweet. Then I started thinking it was a psychological ploy, and he was trying to get into my head. But it was all good. And I still beat him. <laughs> I've been so fortunate. Riverside taught me values. It gave me my foundation, my roots. Seeds can be planted, but it takes nurturing and the right conditions and environment in order for them to grow. And Riverside provided that, thanks to everyone who was part of those 18 years. UCLA helped me grow into an adult, forced me to test those values, and surrounded me with some of the greatest coaches, athletes, and role models the sports world has ever known. Thanks to Bill Zima, and especially my head coach, Gail Godwin, for the opportunity and privilege of being a Bruin. I owe you so much, Gail, thank you. Arizona has allowed me to live my career dream, being a head coach and directing a life skills program. Thanks to Seth Dempsey and Mary Rory for believing in me, and thanks to every student athlete that I've had the pleasure to work with and learn from, including Vicki Mays, who is here tonight, the greatest player in U of A history, and an even better person. Thanks for being here, Vicki. particularly my dad. He always has been and always will be my guiding light, my inspiration, and my hero. The sacrifices he made are immeasurable, and the life lessons he taught, timeless. He told me to work hard and always do my best. I may not have been the biggest, fastest, or strongest, but I always tried my hardest. He taught me to respect others, to do the right thing, to learn something from every experience, to be independent and make my own decisions. I mean, my dad taught me so much, and what I appreciate most is that he did it by example. He's the greatest person I have ever known. No words can ever express my infinite gratitude but if you want to know what my dad meant to me, listen to the song, Everything I Own by Bread, that says it all. To the student athletes here, congratulations on your success so far. Keep learning, enjoy the journey, and embrace the grind. And always remember that you are so much more than an athlete. I believe with my heart and soul that the more you develop as a person, the better you will perform, not only as an athlete, but in all areas of your life. And then most importantly, your identity and self-worth will not be measured by scores, records, times, retweets, or any other external definition of success. You are also leaders. So be leaders of character and lead with integrity, courage, kindness, and an open mind. And lastly, stay true to yourself and never be afraid to take the road less traveled. In closing, this is truly the honor of a lifetime. Jerry called me on a Thursday to tell me that I had been selected and in Arizona on Fridays, you're supposed to wear the colors, meaning red and blue. I wore green and orange to work the next day. 
someone asked, why are you wearing the colors? And I said, oh, but I am. I dedicate this to my dad, and I share it with all of you. Thank you very much. Very, very quickly, I think those of you who know my dad know that he is very, very humble, and he's very, very honored by tonight. And uh, we all love you, Daddy, and we are so proud of you, and we thank Jerry and the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame, and, and um, I think on behalf of my dad, I just say thank you to 